got a new cycle analyst firmware for all you e-bike aficionados to try out. There's a 3.2 in beta release available from our software suite. And this adds a lot of new capabilities. It gives a provision for enabling regenerative braking through backwards pedaling. We have two different types of controlling pedal regen, position-based or throttle control. So in a position-based pedal regen, the amount of regenerative braking varies with the position that you've moved the cranks backwards. And that's a uh, control mode that doesn't require any throttle or any other device. And so we also gave a mode here where your pedal regen is activated by the pedaling, but it's modulated with the throttle. It allows you to have separate regen speed limits independent of your powering speed limit. Uh, so that way you can have, say, a 32 km an hour speed limit for riding and going uphill, and you could set it to automatically do regen at maybe 40 or 45 kilometers an hour on the downhill and give you that kind of buffer window in between your power assistance and when you get the braking governing on the downhill stretches. adds the ability to do regenerative braking through your Digiox control. So if you're set up for your Digiox to control your pedal assist level, traditionally if you push down all the way to zero, that's where you get no more assistance, but well now you could keep tapping the downwards button and get increasing regenerative braking. This is a super handy feature if you want to do regen on longer downhill stretches and just vary that regen just by tapping a button and it lets you continue to pedal while you're going downhill in order to really maximize the energy recapture you get on the downhill segments. It's got yet another new feature uh, that's really useful for those of you running dual motor systems. Traditionally, you would have to set a shunt resistance to be half the value of the individual R shunt of each motor controller. And that was a little bit convoluted to explain and it forced the cycle analyst to operate in high range mode. It would show your power in kilowatts and stuff. Uh, so we've now added a new setting called dual motors enabled. Uh, and when you enable that, it just automatically doubles the amperage that shows up while leaving you in the low range mode where your power is displayed in watts. And finally, we've added a whole new torque sensing control mode. And that's the ability to have not just a bottom bracket torque sensor, but a wheel-based torque sensor. There's an increasing number of hub motors coming on the market that have a torque sensor integrated into the rear motor that's measuring the torque in the cassette-free hub body, or in some cases on the bending of the axle. And when this differs from a torque sensor on the bottom bracket, in that the power computed for how much you're putting in is not a function of your pedal cadence. With a bottom bracket torque sensor, the power is your pedal cadence times the torque. That's how many watts of human power goes into it. If the torque sensor is in the rear wheel, it really doesn't matter what your cadence is. The power is now the rear wheel speed times the torque in the cassette free hub. So this enables the system, when wheel torque sensor mode is active, to compute your human wattage without a cadence sensor even being present. Now, in order to support torque sensing control with the cycle analyst, we've traditionally always required that you still have a pass sensor. And that was done partly as a safety feature, but also because because in order to compute the human power, we needed to know the cadence. Now in the new 3.2 firmware, we've added a few control settings to decouple the need to have a cadence sensor for torque assist to work. So the start threshold voltage is a minimum torque level that if the cycle analyst sees this, whether it's a wheel torque sensor or bottom bracket torque sensor, if it sees this many Newton meters at rest, it'll automatically start to power the motor regardless of whether or not there's any cadence detected. Uh, and this is a great feature, especially for those who start off on an uphill. It just gives right off the line assistance with any kind of torque sensor that you have. If you have a wheel-based torque sensor, you probably don't have any cadence sensor at all. And in order for the system to continue providing power when you're at speed, you just have to maintain above the threshold Newton meters of torque. And as long as you have more, in this, more than, in this case, five Newton meters, then as long as you keep pedaling, you'll get that much assistance. Uh, there's been a few other subtle changes to how the torque sensor control is set up, uh, but ultimately all the information is available by downloading the Cycle Analyst Setup Utility and just clicking the release nodes or hovering over to see the tool tips that are present or clicking in the help and about info. Um, so we hope that you uh, download and enjoy the new features. If you've been using a Cycle Analyst, especially up a regen capable setup, uh, we think you'll find a lot of these are some overdue and nice enhancements.